evening, there's been a major rescue operation off the Channel Islands after a passenger ferry with more than 300 people on board struck a rock and threatened to sink. But despite shipping a lot of water in rough seas, the vessel stayed afloat, and although there were injuries, there was no loss of life. The Sam Marlow, a catamaran, left St. Helier in Jersey at 9.30 this morning to sail to Sark and Guernsey. At 10 o'clock, when she was off Corbier Point, the captain sent a mayday message saying the ferry was holed and that he'd given the order to abandon ship. The Sam Marlow, which has twin hulls, was built in Norway. Tonight, the owners said it had struck a rock for undetermined reasons. One of the hulls was pierced and the ferry began immediately to list a port as water poured in. This was the scene that greeted rescuers as they converged on the San Marlo minutes after it had been hulled. With the vessel listing heavily and taking in water, the master had sent out a mayday distress call and told passengers to prepare to abandon ship. But the list to port meant that they had to jump from the starboard side, a drop of 10 to 15 feet into the life rafts below. It was this fall that caused a number of broken bones, and some passengers ended up in the water. Lifeboats picked up many of the passengers. Several other ferries were diverted to the scene to help. Rescue helicopters were able to winch off the most seriously injured. The speed of the operation, the relatively good weather, and the absence of panic undoubtedly helped to save lives. Back on shore, medical teams were waiting to take the injured to hospital and comfort the remainder. Two-thirds of the passengers were German or French, the others British tourists and islanders. Rough grating noises, obviously we'd gone over something, and then shortly after you could smell uh, diesel, and then it really started to, to tip. It's incredible for me that he crashed along with such a speed against a rock, because everybody knows that there are many rocks. Eyewitnesses watching from the land had also seen the San Marlo cut inside the Corbier lighthouse, using a channel which is only passable at high water and then with care. It, it ain't safe if you know the, the route through it. Um, most ferries, though, take uh, a, um, a line outside of Corbier lighthouse. They wouldn't come inside it. It is obviously a dangerous corner. But the French owners of the ferry are refusing to speculate that the accident was caused by their skipper taking a shortcut. I have no idea. It's too early to say. There will be investigations and we will soon know what exactly has happened and uh, obviously it will be known to, to everybody. Tonight efforts are being made to beach the San Marlo so its hull can be examined. Accident investigators will want to know why the vessel was in such hazardous waters, apparently taking a shortcut that would have saved just five minutes. Peter Gould, BBC News, Jersey. Jersey. The eight-foot gash was ripped in the catamaran's hull when it took a short cut close to the shore. It has become the focus of local and international attention. The San Marlo, high and dry on Jersey's south coast after an overnight battering by storms. Just three hours to take a more detailed look at the ragged tears in her aluminium hull. And to salvage personal possessions abandoned in the rush to escape. We're lying on the um, port side, on this side where the wind is smashed. Um, that's where we were sitting, right on the front where the wind is smashed. And we kept thinking, is the boat going to go over anymore? 26 passengers were kept in hospital, several recovering from operations on broken limbs, and all with vivid memories of their desperate leap to safety. They pushed us out from there about 30 feet, 30 feet high. I landed on the bottom of the dinghy and felt my arm go as I went down. And I was just saying I couldn't move after. Others raised fresh criticism of the vessel's own emergency drill. On normal boats, you do get the, the um, drill as to what to do, but we had nothing like that. And nobody just knew it was a bit of a panic, you know. We just presumed to put on life jackets, and I don't think many actually knew how to put life jackets on. Operators Channeland, who are conducting their own inquiry, will not be suspending the San Marlo skipper. They claim their safety procedures were adequate. Most of the people don't pay attention to those things when they travel. And of course, uh, when, uh, when, when, uh, when there is a problem, then most of the people uh, actually uh, either have forgotten what they were told or uh, and, and, and don't know what to do. Safety standards will be just one element of the investigation carried out by DTI inspector Captain Nick Beer. 
He will also examine the ship's own records and hear first-hand accounts from the St. Malo's crew. For now, extra buoyancy is being loaded to keep the catamaran afloat so that further repairs and a full inspection can be carried out. Robert Hall, ITN, Jersey. Well, live now to Robert Hall in Jersey. Bob, could there now be lessons for the safety of all big catamarans? This, uh, this incident certainly has raised questions, and there's no question that a catamaran is a stable craft. Indeed, in this incident, it stayed afloat, even though one of the hulls, as you saw in that report, has been very badly holed. But the question that's been raised is the angle at which the, the, these things lift at, if, if a capsized or rather a, the hull is holed, and the distance that those passengers had to climb, should extra safety equipment be fitted? Bear in mind that this is a relatively small vessel. There are catamarans uh, crossing the channel now, which can carry up to 1,500 people and cars. So there are recommendations in the pipeline. They're not due to come into effect till next year. Robert Hall in Jersey, thank you.